Dark's just written me yo. Okay, he's here. He wrote me yo on Steam. I'm thinking, what does that mean? What has happened that he needs to inform me about? This is going to be a rematch of a game we saw yesterday. A Game 5 thriller that we saw yesterday between these two players. It looks like Naupo has already conjured up something a little bit different or dark to think about with this fake kickoff. Game sign. Okay, we'll make sure we get game sign for you guys. If it isn't already there, it will be momentarily. Plenty of fake kickoffs, plenty of hard leaves on the kickoff from Dark and Naipo yesterday. I'm expecting to see plenty more today. Hold on a second, Naipo's missed somewhat of an open net. It was awkward. With Dark being as far away from the play as he was, Naipo's going to be pretty disappointed that he didn't at least get a shot on target there for Dark to think about. Oh, the uh, overlays opposite as well. Yeah, actually, that's my fault. I'm going to take the blame on that one. The reason being that Dark actually asked for the blue team, and I told him yes, and then I forgot to change it. So, <laughs> so that's on me. But we're just going to leave it for game one. Actually, we're just going to leave it for the whole series. Um, he probably, like, wrote yo. Ah, uh, that'll be why he wrote yo at the start of the game, of course. Yeah, because I told him he can have blue, and then he's in orange. Yeah, that's my bad. That is my bad. I should have uh, I should have put him on blue. So if he loses this, you can all blame me. Well, part, I'll take part of the blame. The other part of the blame, of course, will have to go to the player, the very talented player, who's currently attacking once again. Now Pope took the first two games yesterday against Dark. He's looking to start off just as strongly today. Slowing down the pace here. Once the also popular recently 50-50 in the Fennec. These awkward little touches are a big part of Naipo's game where he just wastes time, he just chips the ball in front of his opponent, he chips it into the back corner and then rushes to the midfield to grab boost for getting back into the play. He's exceptionally good at doing this without leaving himself vulnerable to demos, without leaving himself vulnerable to 50-50s that could go wrong. He just sticks the ball in awkward positions he can easily catch up to with his mechanical ability. No one in this tournament has been able to make Naipo look normal except for Wass, who's been on kind of on a level of his own. I know you guys blame me. I know all, all of you want to see Dark win this. Everybody's a massive Dark fan these days. I wouldn't blame you for being a Dark fan. He's you know got the underdog story. He's also got the incredible play style. He's got the fans from all around the world, a growing fan base, which he thoroughly deserves as he pushes the meta game forward. If you did watch his games yesterday, he played two series, one against Naipo, very respectable series, but a series that he did end up losing. And in the three games that he did lose to Naipo yesterday, Dark couldn't really get his uh, offensive game going, that offensive game that he's so well known for. He couldn't get it up to full speed. Uh, Naipo just controlled him. Naipo dominated the midfield, much as he is doing in this first game here. Seven shots to Naipo, just one for Dark. Um, this could be maybe the second for Dark, but even that isn't going to be an easy shot for him to get off. Naipo is too quick to recover. Dark forced out of position again and again. He's just on the back foot. He's being pummeled here defensively. Finally gets a nice little boost grab at midfield there. He's trying to build up some speed to get the ball into attack. And it looks like for once, he will get past his opponent, Dark, with somewhat of an open net, but he's overhit that one. It was a tricky one to keep control of. And I mean... He's going to need to score opportunities just like that because they have been so few and far between, especially in this game. If you're missing completely uncontested opportunities like that, then you might just have to say goodbye to the game. Dark actually gets a demo on Naupo at the end of his air dribble, but Naupo at the same time bumps Dark into saving the shot. And once more, Dark is just a fraction away from scoring, but all the same, remains scoreless. 90 seconds to go in game one. Dark slams another shot wide of the net. He's thinking about advancing here after noticing Naipo missed the back corner boost. Even then, Naipo is still such a scary player. Dark, tentative to advance, shoots near post top corner. Knows Naipo's going to save that, but it's setting up a boost seal. Fake jump. Briefly backs up Naipo again. Now Dark's got some space to play with. Another shot that he'll anticipate being saved. Naipo being forced to do some defensive work here. This is crazy to see Dark being held scoreless this long. As yet another shot is easily saved. 
Dark just tr he's forced to pile on the pressure here. He's forced to take risks. He goes for the back corner demo. It doesn't work, but he might still be able to come away with the ball here. Dark just barely stays alive. So now put tried to demo him in his back corner. 30 seconds to go. Dark still scoreless, but now he's advancing on the ground with the dribble. Great control with the wave dash. And eventually, he'll get the goal to make it a one-goal game. So for all of his struggles to score, it is just a one-goal game. And that is unbelievable control from Dark. Exceptional deception on the approach. Will he be able to get control of the ball again? Now Po spots the big kickoff and chips its up corner. It looks like his plans, looks like his awareness of Dark's kickoff strategies are far more well prepared today. Now Po up by two again. Dark just desperately wanted another possession there. He's sick of being in the back foot. He's going to go for it again. He's thinking, well, you know, there's no way that Now Po's going to see me do this twice in a row. Now Po nearly pitches it in off the corner wall. Either way, Dark's got to be quick here. He doesn't have any time to waste. Now Po advances, doesn't want to give Dark space. Dark decides to just shoot this on first time. And now Po's in a great position to clear that one and will win game one with actually an a really low scoring game at the end of it all. Interesting game between these two. I'm going to uh, very quickly apologize for giving the uh, team, the players the wrong teams here. I'll ask if they don't mind me changing it here. Yeah, I'm just going to switch it. So Dark was supposed to be blue team there. I think he 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 tried to message me at the start of this game to remind me, but he couldn't get the message off before the game started. But it's fine. We're going to make sure that in this game, well, hopefully it will change when we restart here uh, to have Dark in the blue team and now put in the orange team. If it doesn't, we're just going to go back to the main menu. We should be... Uh, should be able to give him what he wants. So I just do it pretty much on a first come first serve basis. If no one asks, I'll give the higher seeded player blue. But if they do ask, if one of the players does ask, I tend to be fine with it. Um, this isn't 3v3 where different teams have decals that match one of the colors better than the other. In 1v1, it can be a pretty big deal. Now Pope going to be rocking the Falcons decal and the Octane. And uh, Dark now getting a show off his blue team decal that he wanted to play in last game. Let's see if it is going to be much of a difference. Sniper, not for the first time this tournament, switch his car after winning. It's very interesting to see him do this. It's often, as we all know, something that players will do after a loss, but very rarely something you'll see after a win. Um, Sniper thoroughly controlled the first half of game one. And look at that shot. He's almost scored this with a very sneaky chip shot. And again, he just surprises Dark. The positioning that's far more aggressive than Dark's able to anticipate. Dark's fake jump not really getting the job done there. Now Poe able to see it happening. The shot sneaks in after hitting the bar and the ground. Now Poe, despite the fact that he controlled the first, I'll say three minutes, maybe even three minutes and 30 seconds of the first game, he won't, I think, be happy with how the game finished. And that might explain his car change here. half kick kickoff being countered by Dark. He's actually had a decent success rate of just dribbling his opponents. And the reason why this doesn't tend to work, and the reason we don't see many players doing this as a counter strategy to the half flip kickoff, is because you leave yourself quite susceptible to somebody just rushing a challenge against you. If they just charge in and make any contact on the ball at all, um, even small amount of contact, the fact that they've got 100 boosts and you don't usually gives them possession. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if Naupo tries to half flip again and just sends it straight for the ball, uh, given the fact that he faked the challenge on the first try and it didn't work. He also might just stick to standard kickoffs. He's not had a bad matchup at all in that regard. Dark not slowing down for a moment here. He did dominate OSM in the lower bracket round one with speedy gameplay, especially ceiling shots. Exceptionally quick in the setup. I think for Naupo, that kind of pace is not really an issue to go up against. This is something he's quite comfortable playing against. It's something he's going to favor his, in his own gameplay as well, just trying to get the game to be as quick as possible. Dark opening up a great angle of attack here. Naupo fakes the challenge a couple of times. Dark still circling. Shoots top corner, misses. Naupo quickly advances down the center of the pitch. Double jump is all that's needed for 3-1. You know, Naupo was kind of in the area to save anything but an exactly top corner shot there. So that was 
certainly a risky move from Dark, especially if he's going to hit the post flush like that. No put pre flips to shoot early. Dark is there for it. Looking for his first huge play of the game. Reset on the ball is there. Wave that shot low. And Dark finally gets the clip that you've all been waiting for. Free flip reset, Pogo, and then the delayed shot with the wave dash as he lands to shoot it underneath the pre-jumping now, Poets. You know, one of those shots that when you look at it from Dark's POV, you're wondering why is the goalkeeper jumping there? But it's because the way that Dark spirals his car, the way that he air rolls in the approach, the, the way that he's uh, disguising his intentions really makes it look like he's planning to shoot that one early and high. And now, Poets, is not a, uh, a bad defender by any means. He's a world-class defender, so if he's pre-jumping, it's because Dark convinced him that a shot was coming, and that is full credit to Dark there. Now, does Dark mind game enough to make it readable? Possibly. I expect if we do get the privilege of seeing a dark Rawas matchup at some point, Rawas might be the only guy who's going to just sit on the ground and wait for Dark to shoot the ball low straight at him. He, he's just the, the best player at reading those low 50-50s and flying back down to block them. Naupo's invested a ton of boost here, not really getting much for it, but he stays on the ball anyway. Look at the activity of Naupo. He is refusing to leave the ball here. What does he get for that? He gets back corner possession. That's just the reward for pressure on the ball for Naupo. If he vacated the area to go for mid boost, he would currently be defending one dark aerial play, maybe another after that. No, that's not what he does. He just goes straight for the ball. If he's got momentum, he doesn't really care if he's got boost. He's just going to go for the ball anyway. It hasn't worked out this time. Dark sneaks around him and goes up by one. This is the, the downside of Naipo's aggression is if Dark can see it coming and can beat him to the punch, then he might leave himself a little bit overextended. That time Naipo had the boost advantage. Naipo reads or spots Dark's big kick off there. Dark doesn't really mess up initially, but his second touch leaves a lot to be desired. The first one was fine. That second one went absolutely nowhere. Now Pope accepts the pass gladly, ties the game 4-4. Both players having a bit more success in offense in game two. Dark with a light bump onto Now Pope, who, of course, decides to play the ball instead of going for boost. It's his motto. Dark will take all the boosts away from him. As a result, Naupo loses control. And now it's Dark starting to retake the lead again. So Naupo's sticking to his game plan. I mean, this is what he does. He just prefers to be on the ball and using his mechanics, his recoveries to stick to it. To glue himself to his opponent, limiting their chances. But a couple of times here, he's ended up on the wrong side of the ball and he almost did there as well. It's Dark now advancing, thought he had an opening, mistimed the shot. Naupo just gets enough of it. Fakes a clear to back up Dark. Dark's in a bit of an awkward spot now. Not a lot of boost, but he's just going to stretch up and make the save. Naipo jumps early. Dark does well. And he'll be rewarded with a counter-attacking opportunity here. I think he'll be quite satisfied with the boost steal. With this kind of time remaining on the clock, Naipo's again stretching himself very thin to try and stay on the ball here. But Dark misses the boost steal. Naipo didn't anticipate that. He also drove by. Regardless, that is a big turn of momentum. Dark had full pressure. He's going to have it again here and shoots first time on spawn. Naupo is able to get there. Dark could have had Naupo completely pinned up against the wall there. The fact that Naupo's broken free shows Dark misplayed and Naupo ties with a fake up high. Full control. Didn't even need to use the reset for a wave dash recovery. He just had Dark flopping all over the place there. It's, it's partly due to Naupo's ball pressure. It's partly due to the fact that Dark's just had a couple of small misplays when he's in offense. That's allowing Naupo to break free from very awkward defensive positions. This, this is the kind of misplay I'm talking about. Dark has just shot that one completely wider than it. Looks for the demo on Naupo. He's well aware that it's coming towards him. Dark has managed to chase Naupo away from the play briefly there. Naupo wall dashes into position. The mid boost wasn't there as he tried to pick it up, but he doesn't need it. Naupo scoots the ball underneath Dark with just 14 seconds left. Well, he mistimed the mid boost pickup just by a small margin. But a couple of wall dashes got him into position. And 
He's got the deception. He's got that little bit of acceleration at the last second there. Shoot the ball past Stark. Now it's now pulled the fake kickoff. He recovers perfectly to launch the ball towards Dark's end of the field. Dark forced to just pre-flip into this one. He's hoping for a good bounce. He doesn't really get one. Now Pula's got the position to bump him away and take a two game lead. And Dark drops a no problem in the quick chat there at the end there. Probably not too happy to lose with uh, a couple of chain bumps at the end of a tight game like this. I think Dark will know better than any anyone that this really was his game uh, at the tail end of it. He was one goal up and he had 100 boosts in offense to the zero, maybe 12 boosts of Naupo. And you know, you, you're gonna probably have to defend, even if you've played perfect offense. If you're looking to not overextend against Naupo, it's not unusual for him to break out of defense and to get more chances on you, but I think Dark will be pretty annoyed that he's allowed Naupo to turn over the possession as easily as he did in this game. Shots going wide at the far post, top corner. Little boost misses as Stark tries to seal them away. I mean, these are not mistakes you can afford to make against a player like Naipo. When you, when you get him pinned back in his goal, you've got to keep him there. You really don't want to give him chances to get up to speed and start to pressure the ball. It is a best of five, guys. Same story as yesterday so far. Dark losing the first two games. Naipo has been dominant as ever. It's a high pressure style. Really limits the amount of time, the amount of alone time especially. His opponents have with the ball. It's another shot. He's just lackluster from Dark. He's landed poorly there. Not really threatened Naipo at all with the shot. Look at Naipo. You don't think he got his plan A to work either, but he has followed up with a fantastic catch. Flick the ball a little bit sideways, but he was there to catch it on the landing. Like I said, I'm not sure if he was planning that, but it worked out wonderfully to get Dark on the wrong side of the ball. Naupo faking the kickoff again. Dark collects the boost, but is going to be perfectly fine with this position. He's got such momentum and a crunching long shot. Take the lead by three. This is an illustration of what Naupo's all about. Yeah, go ahead, take my boost. Go ahead, 100 boosts, don't need it. I'm just gonna get supersonic anyway. <laughs> launch the ball into your net. So here Dark doesn't really wanna launch the ball at him. Trying to go for a bit of a more slow approach and it works. That was incredibly convincing from Naupo's POV. It really looks like Dark is about to launch a flick there. And instead he just has to wave dash away from the ball. It's already on target. Dark gets on the board inside the first minute. If I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me right, Naipo's limited Dark to just one highlight reel goal so far this series. He's had a couple of other decent goals, little mind game wins, little mechanical wins, but just one huge goal with a pogo and a mind game from Dark. And this, I think, does get on, get to Dark a little bit. He, he, he won't think that he's playing well unless he's scoring pogos in every single game. It's what he's all about, it's what he practices, it's what he's known for more than anyone else in the world. That's a really good leave at the back corner boost there by Dark. Good now plus pre-jump. Wild, but accurate. And he is going to score off the back of this as well. I mean, he is just chaotic. It is how he plays. A blatant and wicked pre-jump connects because Dark is looking at it as it's coming towards him thinking, there's no way he's really pre-jumping from there, is he? Is he actually pre- Yep, he's gone and hit the ball, hasn't he? <laughs> it's, it's just one of those plays where Naupo doesn't care if his opponent can see him coming. Look at the power he's able to generate from not a lot of play on the ball. Start giving Naupo a taste of his own medicine here. Just chasing with low boost. Naupo more than ready for it. Lands in reverse now, trying to surprise Dark again with an unconventional approach. Naipo just doesn't leave the ball. He is just glued to the ball when he can be. Completely limiting what Dark is able to do here. While also presenting several threats for his own offense to kick into gear at any minute. Naipo just 
delaying in the midfield. Keeping control of the ball. Double reset, triple reset. Naipo scores an absolute worldie. And that might be as impressive as the highlight goal we saw earlier from Dark. Absolutely unreal <laughs> from Naipo. A statement goal in a game that is starting to cement a pretty one-sided series compared to the one we saw between these two players yesterday. Dark is trying to respond in kind here. Even when it looks like Naipo might have lost control, he still gets back to the ball, recovers, and prepares himself to defend once again. Dark, though, shoots in the bottom corner close to Naipo. He didn't expect that one. And Naipo is really thinking that Dark's going to shoot that one into the side of the goal that's most open. You can see that he was lining up to accelerate towards that side. I said Dark just shoots it close to him. It's something I'd like to see more from Dark today. He's maybe shot a few too many times at that far post top corner, far post bottom corner, and allowed himself to be counterattacked. Oh dear, well, I mean, it doesn't matter which top corner you hit there, you've just got to get it inside the open net. Dark did the hard part, and then he missed the open net. Naupo with an insane double in response. Perfect punish. A reset, a flick from edge of the box. And a supersonic rebound as well. Naipo is just too good. He is not satisfied with his group stage performance yesterday. He's bringing his A game as he advances to the top four. Oh, massive mind game by Dark. What's a recovery by Naipo? It looked like Dark was clean through. And Naipo somehow bounces back to the ball and continues to defend at a higher level. Dark trying to 50 it through. This time it does go past him. Naupo with a stronger defensive 50-50 last time. Goes a bit too high on the outside of that one. Dark able to bounce right through him. Still plenty time left. Dark has looked dangerous. I think it's mostly due to small offensive misplays that he's struggled in the matchup today. Oh, I think his own goal. Dark has just deflected that one into his own net. He knew that there was a real, a realistic chance that Naipo is scoring this, despite the fact it's a tight angle. But he really hasn't helped himself there by making a touch on the ball. I think instinct kicked in. He thought, I better hit it in some way. But he's bounced off the post, off Dark, and into his own goal. Still time for Dark. And he's got a good angle to run up with here. Well, what is he doing on this play? Not sure that, that worked out the way that he intended. Here's Naipo on the counter-attack again. Might think about bumping off the back of that. Darko also had ideas for physical play. A look at Naipo. He is just too clean with it. It looks like neither player has control. And then suddenly Naipo intercepts off the wall, takes a quick detour to the ceiling, and then doubles it in off the floor. He's just visiting every surface in quick succession and scoring bangers at the same time. Half flip kick off again from Naipo. Dark wasn't all that ready for it. Tried to dribble the ball backwards, but he couldn't get enough speed to escape Naipo. Dark forced to dive. The time's getting away from him here. And Naipo declines the open net. He is feeling confident now. Will Dark be able to make him regret that decision? So we are still looking at a game with a minute remaining and Dark's got a pogo and a flip to work with but he doesn't use it a bit too reliant on the mind game now Pope counters by completely ignoring him this really is turning into a bit of a freestyle 1v1 but Dark has to just send it every time he's got absolutely no choice but to go now Pope has left him in a massively losing position here but Dark is going to try and continue to play for the win condition. It looks like now he might just be looking for a, a big goal, though I'm not sure that was the most efficient path to a victory. I think Dark has accepted defeat. Naupo's just been too good today. Too solid, too fast, too mechanical. He has denied Dark the opportunity to play his game in offense. And when it came to his own offensive chances, Naupo's been every bit as creative and all the more deadly. He looks to be in form. Remember that he will be on the other side of the bracket after this from Rawas. So still a chance for Naipo 
to run all the way to the final without having to play the rematch against Ruas. 3-0, perfect start to the day for one of the most hyped players in the entire world. One of the players everybody's excited to see in the future. Where will his career take him? He's got all the potential and today he's living up to it.